What can be stronger and more beautiful than our desire to live? But 60% of people in America would choose not to extend their lifespan, even if they could. With all the health and longevity breakthroughs available to us today, we could live much longer than ever. Yet, this doesn't really seem to excite us. We have created the technologies that can extend our life, but we haven't created a life that we want to extend. I was no exception until something happened. When I was at the top of my career and my wife was pregnant with our first baby girl, I found out I had a severe health condition. My doctors told me I have to live on medication every day for the rest of my life. As my daughter's life was about to begin, I could see the end of my life on the horizon. This was unacceptable to me. That's when I decided to dedicate all my time and resources to help myself as well as at least 1 billion people to enjoy more years on Earth. That is, improve both the quantity and quality of our lives. Because scientists are busy with research. Big business is busy making profits. But who is busy thinking about us? Human beings. Today, very few are looking at the moral implications of health and longevity technologies and the fact that our lifespan is constantly increasing decade by decade. And after many years of research and investments into the longevity field, I can tell you with all my conviction, yes, we already have the technology to live much, much longer. The real question is, should we? But before we answer this challenging question, let's celebrate our victories first. Recent challenges and shocks brought radical changes to our healthcare. There has been enormous shift. Fast-spreading viruses have accelerated the development of breakthroughs in science and technology that could allow us to live to 120 years and even beyond. Just three examples. Let's look at gene editing first. Yesterday, you might have been very unlucky in a genetic lottery and pulled out the rare disease ticket. Despite being called rare, it's not rare at all. That's something 400 million people on Earth end up with. They're all around us, including my brave next-door neighbor, a five-year-old boy who has never had a chance to tell his mom how much he loves her because of his genetic disease. So that was yesterday. Today, we can start using gene editing to override the flaws in our genetic code. We can redefine ourselves as a species. Or another example. Yesterday, people had to wait for 12 months for organ transplants. Maybe you even happen to know someone who couldn't last that long. Because 18 people die each day in the US and UK alone while waiting for their liver or heart donor. Today, we are working on regrowing our own organs in our own lymph nodes, using different organ regeneration technologies developed by companies such as Lightgenesis, United Therapeutics, and many others. Let's look at cancer. Yesterday, cancer was considered a kiss of death. People were so terrified of it that they were delaying their cancer screening. Because if they had it, there was almost nothing they could do about it. Like my father back in 2005. While he survived, his quality of life never recovered. Today, we are finally winning the war against cancer. Many cancers can now be caught early enough to ensure a recovery rate of up to 99%. Thanks to companies such as Freenom, Grail, and others. This is all great progress. And that's before we even go into Elon Musk and his Neuralink, who are working on developing seamless computer brain integration, which will help people with diseases such as Parkinson's and dementia. But we have a problem here. With all the advancements in technology, very few people are working on the ethical side of it. 
People struggle to answer these questions. What if I outlive my children? Will I outlive my finances? Where do we draw the line here? We need to have our voice. We need to start a global conversation around the morality of immortality. There are so many trade-offs, dilemmas, questions. Who should have access to longevity technologies? Who shouldn't? How do we make those decisions? Remember, the paradox is that we have created technologies that can extend our life. But we haven't created a life that we want to extend. So again, I ask you, now that we have the ability to extend our lifespans, should we? What concerns us about living longer? What are our fears? Here are five moral issues that we all face. First, the question of inequality. Today, extreme financial inequality is out of control all around the world. The world's richest 1% have more than twice as much resources and wealth as 7 billion people on that planet. Would longer lifespans increase this divide? Or would they help us to close the gap? Tomorrow, I see a world where we can all prosper and where abundance is no longer a luxury, but an everyday reality for everyone. Second, the question of power. Today, some leaders abuse their power. And sometimes only natural death can stop them. So if we all live radically longer, would dictators rule forever? Or would power be with those who embrace the values of diversity and democracy? Tomorrow, I want to see a world where human rights are above everything else. Third, the question of the purpose of our lives. Today, we are designed to have one or two careers or maybe one or two marriages. Years go by so fast that we don't have enough time to stop and think about our own purpose or even just do the things that we really dream of doing. How will the concept of life change as our lifespans change too? Would our life consist of several beautiful mini-lives? What will happen to our career? Could we have as many careers as decades in our life? What will happen to marriage and relationships? Would we abandon marriage as a concept in favor of kids raising partnerships? Tomorrow, I see a world of freedom where we can live our lives the way we want to instead of giving in to the pressure of social conditioning or the fear of death. Fourth, the question of free will. Today, think about the last day of your life. You don't need to choose death. In 99% of cases, death chooses you. Almost everyone dies against their will and not because he or she wants to. So in the future, would choosing to die in whatever form, be blamed as suicide or plain God? Should we be able to decide when to die? And if so, will we have the bravery to actually do that? Tomorrow, I see a world where we can stop worrying about death and disease and can start thinking about living well with a sense of purpose. I see a world where every 5 to 10 years, we can choose if we want to extend our lives or not. Fifth, the question of environment. Today, many of us behave in a way that avoids our own responsibility because we won't be around on earth to deal with the consequences of our own actions. For example, we are throwing out plastic instead of recycling. There is now a massive floating island of plastic in the Pacific Ocean which is three times the size of France. Tomorrow, if we live radically longer, would we finally start caring about the planet instead of just ourselves? Would we begin to take responsibility for our own actions? And if so, when and how should we start? 
Should we start with cleaning up our own mess in our own backyard? Do we know the answers to these five and many more ethical questions? No. Shall we start thinking about them? Absolutely. Yes. If we want to live a longer, healthier, and better life, now it's the time to start the movement to create a better version of our planet by creating a better version of ourselves. So what's next? Here's what all of us can do right now. First, change your mindset. We should switch from thinking about our body and our planet from right now vehicle to a long-term asset. The government, big pharma, the food industry, and even the best clinic in the world alone will not solve your own health problems. It's time to take back responsibility for your own health and the health of our planet. Second, start today. What you can do right now no matter how big or small, to make the world a better place. Would you please stop using plastic bags and bottles? Or just buy something seasonal and local instead of packaged industrial foods? Or plant a tree? Regardless of what it is, don't start tomorrow. Start today. Third, join the movement. Your voice needs to be heard. We need at least 100,000 people to speak their minds about the future. So please go to morality.immortality.com and share your views on these fundamental issues. Consider, what kind of world would you want to live in forever? Because living longer is a choice you make not just once, but every day for the rest of your life. Thank you.